Hi guys, it's Miss Thurston. And I understand that some of you are having a little bit of trouble with close reading number four with for chains because it has a little bit, a huge section on a literary term called motif. And motif is a literary term that may have gotten introduced to you in um, seventh grade, but it might not have. And so I was remiss of not directly um, reviewing this term with you or providing extra help and just relying on the worksheet to review this with you. So I wanted to go ahead and provide some direct instruction on motif with you and give you a little bit of a hint with it as far as it directly applies to our novel chains, because I don't know if I'll get to do this in class. So buckle up buttercups. This is going to be a very down and dirty review and I'm going to give you some hints on how to complete your close reading number four. And of course because I am going to be giving you some extra help with this I'm also going to be extending the due date for close reading number four. So you're welcome. Um, I am going to be very flexible with this but not too flexible. So buckle up buttercups. We are going to do a down and dirty review of motif. Okay, let's ask ourselves, what is motif? Motif, in its essence, is a unifying element in any artistic work. Um, so this could be a painting or a written literary element or a written work, excuse me. Um, it can be a recurring image, symbol or theme, maybe a character type or a subject or a narrative detail. In other words, it's something that occurs over and over and over again in a literary work or a other work of art that um, drives home some sort of point for an author or an artist. And the given motif may be unique to a work or it may appear in numerous works by the same author or different authors. In other words, a given motif may occur in many literary works. In other words, we may see the same motif occur in multiple pieces of art or literature, or it could be unique to that specific work of art or piece of literature. And I'm going to give you two examples here coming up. So please just hang with me in this. So for example, this is an example of a motif that occurs in many works of literature. For example, what we call the Cinderella motif. It, it's the poor, mistreated, beautiful working girl who is rescued by the, dash, by the dashing, kind, rich man. Oh, come on, we've all seen that. In the original Cinderella story, you know, she's the poor working girl mistreated by her evil stepmother and stepsisters. And here comes Prince Charming, who swoops in and saves the day. And we've seen that in other movies. Come on, guys, that's what the Lifetime Channel and the Hallmark movies have made their living on. We've seen that in movies like Pretty Woman and Notting Hill and oh my gosh, any rom-com out there that has the Cinderella motif on it. Think about it, guys. So that is called a motif, a reoccurring element across many works. And if they keep in and think about the Cinderella motif and those kinds of literary works. They keep emphasizing that this is the poor little working girl and he's the big rich man swooping in and saving the day. And everything about her is helpless and everything about him is wonderful and rescuing. 
And it's because they keep emphasizing that point is what makes it a motif and not a theme. Okay, the theme would be love is everlasting or whatever other kind of junk that they're peddling about love. Yeah, I'm a little cynical, but that is why it's called a motif. Okay, but that's an example of a motif we see across many works. Okay, because more than one piece of literature has shown this poor Cinderella type of motif of a poor little girl, poor woman being rescued by the big strong man. Now, let's talk about an example of a motif that is specific to a particular type of literature or a particular one particular work. Think back to those of you who are familiar with the Harry Potter works. A particular type of motif that is specific to one work is the Muggleborns versus the Purebloods. Remember, the Muggleborns were those witches that came into power um, and used their gifts, but they were technically humans. OK, they were technically pure humans um, and they weren't of what we would call the witch ancestry, whereas the pure buds like Draco Malfoy, um, they were of uh, like royal lineage, lineage, so to speak. They had pure witch blood and throughout the Harry Potter series, they made a big deal about this because um, that was the whole point of Harry Potter joined those two worlds because he had a parent from each world of the regular humans and um, the witches or the wizards, excuse me. So the whole point is that this was about racism and intolerance, but they did it in the form of being a regular human and a wizard. So this motif was very specific because they talked about humans versus wizards, even though it was likened to, um, you know, a difference between racism and intolerance. So that is the difference between a motif versus a theme because they never got into specifics about what should you feel about it and the author's stance. They just kept mentioning this struggle over and over throughout the series. Okay, so that is the motif is when they keep bringing up this element over and over again. So now let's talk about the motif of identity in Chains. Throughout the first few chapters in Chains, um, the first eight chapters, over and over again, Isabel and Ruth are told what they are. First, they are told that they are, you know, they that they belong um, to one household, then they are sold and they're told that they belong to another household. Then they are told to identify as Tories. Then they are told, um, they are told that they have so many different identities and what they should believe of who they are. So that is what I want you to gather evidence of. Go back and look, especially in chapters seven and eight, and find evidence of what they are told they need to believe about they are, their identity and who they belong. For example, when they are told you are Tories now because um, you belong to a household that are Tories. Okay, so that would be one example. So I want you that. So let me clarify again, your evidence should also should back up the 
feeling of identity, of solidifying who they are, but it also can um, of who Isabel is, but it also can provide counter evidence. Your also um, your evidence can also contrast with the idea of them trying to determine who Isabel is. Remember, the Locktons are trying, and everybody around her is trying to tell her, Isabel who she is. When Isabel is trying to figure it out. For, um, for herself, um, because she knows that she is just, she is more than a slave. She is more than just a piece of property. So find evidence. You can also find evidence in chapters seven and eight that speak to more than her being told what her identity is. You can also find pieces of evidence in chapters seven and eight where she is um, finding out her identity for herself. And I challenge you to find um, at least one piece of evidence that um, where Isabel is finding out her own identity rather than um, being told what her identity is. And there is evidence thereof for that. So again, let's recap. When you're tracking the motif for um, identity in chains, there is evidence in chapters seven and eight where Isabel is being told what her identity is. But there's also evidence in chapters seven and eight where Isabel is finding her own identity for herself. And so I challenge you to find pieces of evidence to show both of those tracks. And throughout um, chains, we're going to track this motif because remember, a motif is a reoccurring um, is a reoccurring um, let's go back because I'm losing my words. It's a unifying element throughout a work and this reoccurring element of identity is found in chains of her trying to find her identity of her being told of Isabel being told that she is one thing when she know um, of just a slave of just a piece of property when Isabel knows that she is so much more. So um, I want you to think about that as you're gathering these pieces of evidence. And if you have any other questions or concerns, we will definitely be talking about this more after the Thanksgiving break. Have a good day.